Today I'll demo you the content security policy of uh, facebook.com. So uh, content security policy we have covered uh, maybe multiple times on this channel and I've explained like you know uh, different directives and, and why you sh we should be using it, what kind of protection does it provide. So today uh, we are going to use this CSP evaluator. Uh, of course you can evaluate content security policy using burp uh, zap you can also just look through like you know browser traffic you can use fiddler the, the postman like you can use any tools uh, just just you need to know is the response of the website and then look through the csp now the good thing about this particular tool is uh, it it breaks it down in a in a way that you can easily read as well as it will show you like you know the red and and orange flag uh, what I meant is the red flag is where it finds something vulnerable or maybe orange flag which is not following the security best practice. So it's going to uh, throw you all those at you and this is very very useful when you are doing the penetration testing or uh, like you know you are working with the developers to see if their CSP is secure or not. Um, of course there is a like you know CSP report only feature where it is not going to block anything but it will tell you how the CSP is working but this is this particular tool will tell you uh, exactly what's missing so CSP evaluator allows developers and security experts to check if content security policies serve as a strong mitigations against cross-site scripting attacks it assists with the process of reviewing CSP policies which is usually a manual task and helps identify subtle CSP bypass which undermine the value of this policy. CSP evaluator checks are based on the large scale study and are aimed to help developers to harden their CSP, improve the security of their application. This tool, also available as a Chrome extension, is provided only for the convenience of the developer and Google provides no guarantee or warranties of this tool, right? So, uh, and here you also have, an, uh, have a sample. So we're gonna start with the uh, Facebook.com. We'll, we'll evaluate their policy, and, and probably I'll also talk about like you know the other directives which uh, which this policy is calling out. So if you enjoy this free content, uh, please hit the thumbs up button, uh, like button. It's going to even like you know immensely help me uh, to run this channel. And also, if you have any questions, please drop it down to the comment section. So what you need to do is first uh, you type the website name which you want to evaluate, and then say check CSP. Now here you will see multiple options like which version you want to evaluate. If you keep the top one, it's the non base plus backward compatibility as well. So now if you see this one, uh, this CSP like you know this becomes fairly easier to read uh, than the other. Uh, you can see there are like you know different color coding. It's used here. Uh, one that you can see is an orange, then red colors. Uh, here you can see a yellow as well. Uh, so and that is all explained here and it says evaluated CSP as seen by browser supporting CSP version 3. So first thing uh, you can see is default SRC and it says high CVID finding that means uh, of course they are following some non like you know not good practice. So you can see uh, the, the highlighted part here is data URI in a default CRC allows the execution of the unzipped script. Now if we go here in the default SRC and under data, we can see uh, Facebook is using unsafe inline. Now we all know the history of unsafe inline. Uh, you can pass any executable script in the inline and which is going to be executed. So uh, that's a, not a good practice, I'm sure, as well as evaluation, right? But I'm sure Facebook have, might have some valid reason for using it. Uh, any case. Uh, this is why it is being flagged uh, so that that's something uh, we should like you know we should uh, recommend when we are creating our own CSP now if you look at the script CRC it says host whitelist can frequently bypassed consider using dynamic in combination with the CSP nonce and hashes api.facebook.com is known host to JSONP P is for padding so JSON padding endpoints which allows bypass the CSP to understand more about why and how this is exploitable, why is this flagging as a high risk, a high severity vulnerability, probably we should look at here. And and here I found this this is a really good block I found uh, where we can like you know understand the problem. So how how is this uh, like in demonstrated is suppose uh, if you have unsafe inline right. So if you part the script. Uh, on this host, a uh, response will have uh, the payload which is uh, like you know was inputted uh, in the request. 
and then it will be executed in the browser now to prevent this let's add content security policy and the content security policy we are using the script src and we are saying only this particular domain will trust the script so m dot at this dot com uh, there is the only domain from where if the script is sent uh, we will trust it otherwise we'll reject it okay that's fair and if we add this here right uh, now again we call the same uh, with the payload now here it will say content security policy page setting block to the loading of resource at inline uh, this one this is it's not going to be executed because we don't trust the script like inline script is not allowed here okay uh, that's fine now this csp is working and doing its job but there is a problem so however m dot at this dot com contains json p endpoint at this particular page so what's gonna happen is uh, when you have the json p and maybe you can read through the wikipedia but the the like you know the conclusion or i would say the summary is whenever you have this json like you know padding endpoint which is vulnerable uh it's usually uh not sanitized at all so anything in the callback query string parameter is written as a script we can change the callback parameter to make return completely arbitrary javascript so now what we can do is we can easily bypass we can call back that using some arbitrary javascript uh, and when the script is called the script will be called from this particular domain which if you remember here our content security policy was anyway like you know anyway it was trusting and now this one will be executed and that's why this evaluator is calling out that api.facebook.com has a this endpoint jsmp endpoints and which can be used to bypass the csp right so this is all like it's being called uh, for example this one it says there is no bypass found there are no endpoints found but make sure url does not serve the jsmp replies or angular libraries so that's why it's like medium severity i think a possible medium severity finding and red ones are the one where it actually found the jsmp endpoints style src is looking all good so no issues there connect src so here allows only resource downloaded over https and it is from localhost i think they are using it for uh, okay a web socket right so what is connect src so http uh, connect src directive restrict the url which can be loaded using the script interface so that includes like you know fetch our ajax call http request web socket as we saw facebook is using so it will restrict like what are the ips i think this they might be using this for chat or some other function that's why it's allowed but that's why it is lagging that yeah this is a medium severity because it's on the local host font image media frame worker block all and upgrade src like request all looks good it says object src is missing and it is recommending that we should like rather than just omitting and not specifying it we should set it to none that means uh, we are not going to trust any object and just to take a f like you know a quick example this object src specifies valid sources for the object embed and applet elements so once you specify any of this object right any of this uh, html elements and if you specify what are the uh, like in you know, a source you you permit in this syntax you can specify more than one just like any other uh, directives then it will only tr trust if you do not have anything you specify none and that is what it is complaining that yeah if you don't have anything just specify none so just in case because by default it will trust everything and if you explicitly deny this this is going to be much more helpful and last thing it says this is also missing request trusted type for consider requiring trusted type for scripts to lock down dom xss injection as sinks you can do this by adding the script to your policy let's quickly like uh, take a look at this one so require trusted type for instructs user agents right user agent where we have chrome firefox uh, safari to control the data passed to dom access sync function like element.inner html that's critically like you know pretty much what we use to exploit the dom based xss when use those function only accept non spoofable type values created by trusted type policy reject strings together 
uh, with the trusted type directive which guards creation of trusted type policies which allows authors to define rule guiding writing rules to DOM and thus reducing the DOM access attack surface to small isolated parts of the web application code base facilitating their monitoring and code review so this is uh, one this is like you know the syntax you set it and this allows using string with dom access injection string function require matching types created by trusted policy and here is the example which will tell you that this is the string will be rejected and it will throw the type error uh, given i think it's somewhere defined it has to be somewhere defined here as a content security policy and that's why it is not allowed this one so yeah so th that's why like uh, of course like csp has so many directives and and probably you should read them and 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 it's not very easy to remember everything that's why you, you can keep the guide handy and whenever uh, you are working with the developers to define this policy uh, what i would highly suggest is to use this tool just to evaluate it gives you quick rundown on on whether it is secure or not and and it's a very helpful tool not just for a security professional but also for the developer they can evaluate themselves and they can find keep on fine tuning because getting the right csv policy is obviously very important one thing though i think we probably have uh, like you know also concluded here in the blog csv is powerful mechanism which can prevent xss vulnerabilities however always remember it is a second layer of protection so you still want your developers to have uh, like you know proper uh, input validation sanitization controls in place uh, so yeah hopefully uh, you like this uh, episode uh, uh, hopefully you learn something new if you do please share with uh, your community as well as please hit the like button if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next week bye